Dear Richard, while I appreciate your response, I will attempt to respond as lovingly as I possibly can. You wrote, Paul says that all government comes from God, Romans, and we are to honor and respect and pray for our leaders. I don't disagree with anything that Paul said, but your paraphrasing leaves much to be desired. All governments don't come from God, unless you are prepared to declare that Hitler and the Nazis are from God. But God does indeed establish governments for his purposes. We are to respect their authority, but honor is a whole different issue. Romans 13, 5 through 7. Therefore, it is necessary to be in subjection, not only because of wrath, but also for conscience' sake. For because of this, you also pay taxes. For rulers are servants of God, devoting themselves to this very thing. Render to all what is due to them. Tax to whom taxes due. Custom to whom custom. Fear to whom fear. Honor to whom honor. Do you think our government deserves honor and respect? Let us think about this in the big picture. We're talking about a government that was formed because it decided to rebel against this leader, the King of England, which you've already stated that Paul warned we who are Christians not to do. We're talking about a government that rebelled over unfair taxation, demonstrating their love for money, which we know is the root of all evil. We're talking about a government that manipulated and killed Native American Indians to obtain land and power. We are talking about a government whose founding documents gave lip service to a generic God and a creator, never mentioning Jesus Christ in the Declaration of Independence, the Constitution, or the Bill of Rights. We're talking about a government that has played lip service to Jesus Christ and to those who are faithful to him outside the official documents. We're talking about a government based on capitalism, which is the system of greed. We are talking about a government that separated church from state. We are talking about a government that opened the doors to all decadence and filth being spewed across the nation and through the world through its doctrines of free speech. We are talking about a government that created the judicial system, which ignores Jesus Christ and consistently sides with the secular world of logic, allowing no-fault divorce, abortion, and in many states right now, homosexual marriage. We are talking about a government that has sent our fathers and sons to war declaring righteousness, only to find that most American wars haven't been about protecting America at all. Instead, it's been about protecting its power, and its influence over other nations. We are talking about a government that doesn't believe in loving their enemies or turning the other cheek. We are talking about a government which can only be considered a modern-day Babylon. Even the nations we have supposedly helped have been brought under the decadence of our supposed democracy, making them twice as much nations of hell than itself. And the truth is, it helps no one unless it benefits itself. Don't believe me? Why is it that we allow China to treat its citizens so inhumanely? Why is it we do nothing about the plight of the poor in the oil-rich Middle Eastern countries? Why is it we've done nothing to save the lives of Christians in Rwanda? You wrote, God does not separate church and state as the world does. And you're right. Our world blends the two despite what it says in order to deceive the faithful. Jesus, through the new covenant, made it simple. His kingdom is not of this world and we aren't supposed to be part of this world. You also wrote, everything, whether physical or spiritual, is under him. Although man has been given free will to mess things up for a time. Yeah, man is free to mess up. But those who follow Jesus don't participate in such foolishness, right? What fellowship does light have with darkness? You wrote, all people great and small will be held to account. So don't be concerned when evil seems to prosper. It's only for a season. Rather, ask God what our role is in order to change things and usher in his kingdom. Our role in this world was given by Jesus, and it hasn't changed. Matthew twenty-eight eighteen through 20 says, And Jesus came and spoke to them, saying, All authority has been given to me in heaven and earth. Go therefore and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all that I commanded you. And lo, I am with you always, even to the end of the age. I know that you're like most American Christians who see it as our duty to try to shape this nation, but our efforts are wasted and corrupted through politics and government. We should be rising above the fray and shaping it spiritually through the Holy Spirit. Christian involvement over the last 280 years or so hasn't stopped the country from falling apart. In fact, we've done nothing more than embolden the enemies of Christ. Spiritually, American Christianity has been prideful and rebellious to the tune of some 35,000 denominations and growing. All I'm advocating is that we stop playing the political games and start focusing on him. Can't you hear his voice? Is it really calling you to vote for the lesser of two evils? If your answer is yes, I consider you to be deceived, and I mourn for you, my friend. Satan uses fear and intimidation, all right. 
Ask yourself what it is that truly motivates you in your participation in politics. Now, I can't speak for you, Richard, but I know many Christians who are acting out of fear. They're afraid of what this nation is going to do to them and their churches. This flies in the face of what Jesus teaches us. John 12, 25-26 says, He who loves his life loses it, and he who hates his life in this world will keep it to life eternal. If anyone serves me, he must follow me, and where I am, there my servant will also be. If anyone serves me, he must follow me, and where I am, there my servant will also be. If anyone serves me, the Father will honor him. Do you honestly believe that Jesus and the apostles would be voting? I don't, and neither did the Christians of the first three centuries. While there are many quotes available, let me share one striking quote from the third century. The apostolic tradition of Hippolytus, chapter 16, 10 through 11, third century. If someone is a military governor or the ruler of a city who wears the purple, he shall cease or be rejected. That is, kicked out of the church. Okay, now I'm going to have problems with this next word, but the catechium, which is a Christian convert under instruction before baptism, or faithful, who wants to become a soldier, is to be rejected, for he has despised God. Clearly, before the Clearly, before Christianity became the state religion of Rome through Constantine, we were being taught not to be involved in government. This is in alignment with everything Jesus and the apostles taught about our involvement with the government. Somehow, most Christians don't see it this way today. And frankly, that's what's truly frightening to me. Now, you mentioned Joseph and Daniel as great examples of leadership in pagan nations. And this is also quite true. But the difference between Joseph and Daniel is that they were appointed by pagan kings. They did not choose to run for office. They did not find themselves in campaigns that lie and twist the facts in order to gain votes. In addition, both Joseph and Daniel were prisoners of sort, and they were not under the new covenant. Finally, the passage that Robin recalled seems to ignore the fact that most of those politicians in the 60s and 70s who were in the government at that time were confessed Christians and Catholics. And it ignores the fact that our government is not designed to support Jesus Christ and his teachings. It is the devil's government, and it always has been. Equal rights to all men includes the wicked. I'll stop here, as I've already written much more than I think I should have, and I could go on for hours more trying to convince you of something that should be apparent to all Christians. I wonder why the Holy Spirit isn't being heard in this regard, but perhaps it's just a matter of time. Well, until next time, bro. Happy Jesus Day, God bless, and peace out.